So uh, welcome back to another Gibbs adventure. Uh, today I'm going to do a little demonstration on Martin and what to look for, what not to look for, and how it all works out. This is my catch from the 2023-24 season. I have uh, 53 on the table, and uh, I'm going to go through roughly how we, how they would be handled and what they're looking for, and uh, a couple of other tips I want to pass along just to try to give you a heads up on how to maximize your profit when you're trapping. Um, more money is lost in the skidding room than anywhere else along the journey. Um, it's really important to, uh, to pay attention to the finer details when you're putting up Martin. Now, I recommend two boards, a male board and a female board, copied off the Ranch Mink guys. And uh, the reason I do that is because I'm below the 50th parallel. And uh, the reason for that, again, is, is uh, Bergman's Law, where the further north you go, the larger the animals are, and your average size is going to change. The further south you go in a range of, uh, of a population of animals, the smaller they become. The further north you go, the bigger they are. In the north, you're going to run extra large in doubles, far north. And when you're, when you're around uh, my area, I'm in the Timmins area, um, you're going to run a lot of, uh, your catch is going to be mostly extra large and large. If you get down North Bay and South, or places like Maine and New Brunswick, you're going to run a lot of smaller mark. Your average size is going to be uh, probably uh, large and uh, mediums and smalls. So I'm just talking averages. There's always exception to every rule. And uh, I know from dealing with trappers, they really like to, to pick out little fine details that uh, they get hung up on. But this is an average. When you're north of 50, Bergman's Law means that your animals are going to be bigger. So I'm talking like Moosonee, you know, James Bay, uh, Cree area, Labrador, uh, north, north of Shepherdville, uh, you know, no northern Manitoba, whatever, you're going to see a lot of bigger animals. And it's just a nature, it's just a genetics, they need to be bigger to survive in that environment. Uh, the further south you go in a range, you're going to get a lot of smaller animals because they, they don't need the calories and the size to, to, uh, to live in that area. So in any section or any type of uh, fur, there's different what we call sections. A uh, section is basically a geographical area that the marten kind of match and they, they grade them like that. So when you send them to, the, to an auction, they'll, they'll match them out to all kinds of different sizes and, and they'll put geographical areas that match. So, Martin aren't sold male or female, so that always makes a little bit of confusion with guys. It's sold by size, and uh, what I'm going to try to pass along here is some tips for you to, to make as much money as you can from the Martin that you have for whatever wherever you trap. So I talk about two boards. I use because I'm at the southern end of the or more in the central range for Martin. My average size is going to be large and extra large. On the table today, I have 53 Martin, and I'm going to go through real quick on how we size them and what we're looking for. It'll give you it'll give you an idea, and uh, a couple of tips that I'll pass on is I mark the size on my boards, and I pin for length. You can't make every Martin into an extra large or a double extra large, but especially the ones that fall on the line, you want to make sure you get it an inch over so you keep that size. So the sizes for Martin are 16, 18, 21, 23. The large size has three inches in it. Don't ask me why, I have no clue, but that's what, that's what the standardized is. Uh, anything else basically has a two inch size gap. Doubles and triples are normally sold together because you don't get a lot of, of doubles and triples, so I don't even bother. Like You can make another size of over 25 inch, call them triples, but you don't really get enough for the, the auction houses don't segregate them out to say that they're, they're uh, a different size because you're not you're going to get hundreds of skins not thousands when you're matching skins in today's market you're looking for lots hundred a hundred plus skins because you're going to feed a factory it's not like it was in the 80s when we sold coat lots and you'd have 50 skins in a lot and people would buy them to make a garment or whatever now they want to feed a factory and they want thousands of skins not hundreds so lots are bigger Sometimes the, the, the sizes are put together because depending on what they are, 
always the ones that they're going to prefer are, their, are their, what we call the darker colors. The paler colors, like that, are going to be dyed. So, not not uh, you can group kind of pails together a bit more because they're looking to dye them. So, anyways, here we go. Two boards. If you're north of 50, I would say just use one board. Just use the big board because your size is going to be extra large and up doubles. If you're south of 50, you're going to run into a smaller ones all the way down to the edge of their range, and that's why I recommend uh, using the two different boards. Ranch mink industry has gone through a big uh, upheaval right now. They went from probably 80 or 90 million skins back down to 8 million, but they use two boards. They use a male board and a female board, and uh, I just copied their boards. On one side, I have the female mink measurements, 17, 19, 21. They're the same measurements for the male, 17, 19, 21. The other thing I'll do is on my boards is I put in a uh, center line here, and it just helps me make sure the, the, pale, the tails get pinned straight. Nothing looks more awkward when, when the, something's put on the board sideways. So just a little tip is to pin your tails nice and straight, and then to achieve that, I just put a line on the board like that. Okay, quickly want to go over what's important to a trapper for fur handling. That's where you make your money, okay? So you want to get a uniform set of boards. You want the front legs left inside the pelt when it's dry. You want the bottom lip cut off. You want the legs, the back legs opposite of the tail. You want the tail split and pinned out. You can use wire or screen, I don't care, okay? You make your length on the skin by pinning it on the board when you stretch it fur in. So as soon as I put it on the board and I know whatever size it is, if I'm on the line, that's when I'm gonna push it a bit. If it's inside the marks, cause there's two inches and in the, in the larges there's three inches, I just leave it wherever it is. But if it's right on the line, that's the one, those are the skins I'm gonna push a little bit. And I do that when I pin it originally on a board. No claws, you can't leave the claws on, okay? This is for the commercial fur trade, not taxidermy. You don't want any claws left on the pelt. When it gets to the auction, if you sell it at auction, they're gonna drum these things and anything that's sticking out can get caught and, and can cause a damage. Skins are drummed before they are graded. Okay, so the first step is to come into the auction. They're gonna put a, a pelt tag on it. They're gonna staple that pelt tag on. Then it's gonna go into a, a bin and it's gonna go to the drum room. It's gonna be drummed and drumming is cleaning of the fur. Then it's gonna go up and it's gonna be sized. I showed you my sizing board, okay? So characteristics for a trapper to look for to get the best return on his money. Pin the ears flat to the head, cut the bottom lip off. Front legs tucked inside. Back legs opposite of the tail. Tail pinned open and flat. No claws, okay? And make sure you brush it a couple times when you're, when you're doing it. And everything else will take care of itself. When it's dry and it's completely done, I put it on the board for eight hours or less most of the time because in the winter time it dries fast. I turn it back, fur out, that's when I pin the ears forward. I put it on the board for a, a, a solid day, maybe two days. I take it off the board and then I hang it up and I hang it by the nose like this for a couple of days and ensure it's completely dry. When it's finished, I put it on a on a fur hanger and I leave it like that till I'm ready to sell it. If I'm if I'm gonna be a long time between the, moving it, I might put them in the freezer, but generally speaking, I'll just, if it's a couple of months during the season before I sell them, I dry them properly, make sure they're uniform, hang them up on a fur hanger, and when I'm ready to sell, I'm ready to go. So I mentioned before the, the size of the measurements, and I made a sizing board because it's easier to size your marten like that. And I recommend that every trapper do this. It just, it's just a piece of wood and I put the measurements 16, 18, 21, 23. You could put 25 on here if you really want to be a fanatic because 25 and over is what we call a 3XL, but like I said, they don't really sell them on their own, so not a big deal. But it's simple to use a sizing board. The measurement is from the base of the tail to the tip of the nose, so you put it on the board and it has to be greater than to make that size. So in this case, extra large, extra large, extra large, 
large, extra large. And by doing this, there's a double, not very many of those in my file. Another double. So this one, it has to be bigger than to make the size. So here's a what we call a collar. So you can see the nose is just making over the line. So extra large. If that nose didn't get past the line, it wouldn't be that size. Another double. And the sizing board, it just goes so fast. It's unbelievable how fast you can size your Martin when you have a sizing board instead of fooling around with a tape measure. Large. Extra large. So you, you could quickly see a common theme here of what size I'm running and mostly extra large. That's what you look for in color. That's what they really like in color versus something like this. Okay, something like this is going to be dyed. Something like this are going to use naturally, so dark or extra dark compared to pale or extra pale. Okay, just mix a large. Extra large. Extra large. For now, extra large. You see, it doesn't take me really that long to go through a pile of Martin. Extra large. So it's funny in my whole pile of Martin here, I probably only got two that are really a nice color. The rest are what we all call dyers. So for the most part, they're all going to get dyed. So out of 53 Martin, I ended up with uh, three that are doubles, and the most of the split is between large and extra large. We'll give it a count here just so we know. So three doubles. And then how many larges we got there? One, two, three. Six large, two, three, three, four. So basically, there's my breakdown. I have three two XLs. I have twenty-four extra large, and I have the twenty-six large. Okay, that's my breakdown. Okay, so I quickly uh, I broke these down real quick by color. Just a rough, uh, rough grade. Not really a huge concern for trappers to worry about what color they have. Of course, the most desirable is always going to be the darker colored skins versus the more paler ones. And the reasons the paler ones aren't worth as much is because they're going to bring, they're going to be dyed, so they don't bring as much money. So something that's nice and dark, like like so, is going to be uh, used naturally. Almost every Martin has that orangey throaty patch on them. It'll, it'll vary, you know, between different Martin all the way down the line. You know, almost every one is different. But uh, to say, to say uh, just to simply put, the, uh, the colors are going to uh, match out to a degree. Depending on what you're, where you are, you're going to run a lot of pails or extra pails. Generally in the southern end of the range, when you get to the northern range, uh, you're going to get a lot more dark ones. Uh, biggest Martin ever seen in my life come out of Old Crow in the Yukon. Uh, best color usually comes out of Labrador. They got a lot of dark Martin like this one. Um, 
the smaller martin, like I say, come out of uh, New Brunswick and uh, in Maine, southern Ontario, where it's at the southern edge, edge of their range, and the big guys all come from, you know, north north of 50 and, and further north. There's a scientific uh, principle of Bergman's law, and basically, the further north you go, the larger the animal is. So that's what you do. So I, I never get too hung up on the on the on the uh, colors. Uh, when you send it to auction, they're going to fine grade them and they're going to break out pails, extra pails, uh, dark brown. You know, they're going to give you a whole bunch of different colors. So that's that, that's going to be whatever it's going to be. But suffice to say, a trapper uh, should just kind of do his best to present whatever they catch in their area in the best possible way. That's where a lot of guys make a lot of mistakes. They... Uh, They'll buy a $15,000 skidoo, they'll buy a $50,000 truck, and they skimp in the trapping department. So handling fur is probably where a lot of money is lost in, in the wild fur industry. We don't have a standard uh, put, put up anywhere. It's all whatever the flavor of the guy is, it's putting it on the board. And believe me, uh, it comes in all different sizes and shapes, which is kind of a disservice, but it is what it is. Uh, what I'll try to do right now is just pass on a few handling tips. So you're looking to have a uniform put up. Don't pull the back legs too far down. Just pin them where they lie. You make your 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 mark by pinning the length. Can't overstretch something. You can't, but don't understretch it because you're going to lose money. So just pay attention to some of the finer details. I always recommend to pin the ears forward on the head. It gives you a nicer looking Martin. Let's see if I can find one that doesn't. Okay, so just just a quick example. You know, didn't do anything with the ears. You know, not not the nicest. Not a bad put up, but not the nicest. And uh, a little bit narrow. Okay, so like like anything in the world. Uh, Trappers are always trying to, uh, they're pretty frugal people and they'll try to push everything to the max. Um, too narrow is not good because you're going you're gonna to lose the size. You know, this is a very narrow, very long Martin. It's not one of mine, it's one of the ones that I had bought. And uh, I just grabbed my board, okay. So, it measures almost, almost at a, at a, at a double. But it's so narrow, when you put it up against a real, uh, it's, it's all it really is is an extra large. You know, we, they tried their best to get a double out of it, but they pushed it too far. But the right idea is they got the front legs inside, the feet, the back legs opposite of the tail, and the, and the tail pinned out nice and flat. So otherwise not, not too bad, but uh, you know, just if I can show you this one maybe. It just gives a nicer appearance when you pin the ears forward flat on the head like that. Okay, so it makes it look like the fur starts right here instead of looking like it starts back here. Just a tip. So I just have a couple of examples on the table of uh, what not to do. So uh, the tails on a Martin are valuable, so you're always trying to include the tail. Some of these Martin could have used a really good brushing. So this one here, if you can see, it's matted and dirty here, so it's definitely got some damage. But uh, a little bit of brushing would have presented that Martin you know, in a much better way. And uh, you know, it's just a little bit of brushing. It doesn't hide the damage, but it presents it in a much better way. Still see the trap mark, but it doesn't look nearly as bad because I brushed it out now. And this is just a dog slicker brush, so a cheap investment, make your fur look a lot better. Okay, you know, I'm not sure what happened here. Not part of the head is missing the bottom lip. I always take the bottom lip off. This one's way too narrow. You can see how they stretch, so. Probably what happened, it was taken off the board too early. But again, you can see a mat here, okay? So you're better off to use the fur comb 
It's a cheap investment. It's a dog slicker brush. And you just brush it out. Because when you're looking at it, you're, that, if there's a flaw, your eye automatically goes to that flaw. So here's the kiss of death now with Martin. See that? That's a taint. So, a lot of times when you see me looking at Martin, if I'm uh, buying Martin from guys and that, you'll see me giving it a quick blow on the fur because I want to see if there's any. So this one has two, uh, two, two spots of taint. It has a taint right in the belly and it has a taint up in the flank. So that's going to be is a that's a damage mark. So don't use a stretcher that's too narrow. I mean, uh, you can probably you see on these ones. This one is is probably the proper stretch. That one's too narrow. Same size Martin, but the presentation is off with that one. So just a couple of something to think about when you're stretching them. You're not. You can't make every skin into a, an extra large or a double extra large. They are what they are. You can do your best to present it in the boss, the best possible way for the fur that you're working with in the area that you trap. Not all Martin skins are equal. Size is, is, a, is a determining factor for sure in the price, but presentation in overall in your general put up is going to make you or break you. So pay attention to the stretch. Um, you know, get a uniform board. I, I copy the ranch mink boards, and that's what I use. Pin the ends, ears forward, split the tail, pin it out, put the feet opposite of the tail. There is absolutely no advantage of putting the feet on the side, it doesn't give you anything extra. Pulling the legs too far can hurt you, but like pulling it too far down because you're pulling it out of the flank area. So, pay attention to that. Cut the bottom lip off, it's not needed, and away you go. I just want to show you quickly what happens when you size Martin that aren't, uh, that are stretched too narrow. So this is not a bad stretch, but if you look at the head, it's pretty, pretty narrow. So when you put it on a sizing board, it goes over the, into the extra large, but it's really a large. Okay? So you're not going to count, we call that a banana stretch at the head. So, I mean, he had the whole, he had the right idea, but just, that was overdoing it. And uh, here's another one that's way too narrow. Okay, so this one actually makes it up to a 2XL, but look how narrow it is. So you, you automatically drop it back one size, probably two size into an extra large, or to a large. Okay, it just doesn't have the width, it's just way too narrow in this section here. I mean, versus something, something that's stretched like this. You put it on the board, okay? It's a solid large, okay? So I'm not advocating to anybody to overstretch anything. I'm saying to pay attention to it. You know, even this one, it's 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 a borderline skin in, in the width. It's a little bit narrow, and definitely doesn't help yourself because you're missing the tail. And here's another really narrow stretched Martin. So again, you size it, it goes to a 2XL, but it's definitely, I mean, a fur buyer doesn't want to buy this as a 2XL because it's not a 2XL. It's basically a, it's, it's just a large Martin that's been stretched as an extra, as a double extra large. So that's pushing it. Like this is what you're kind of looking for. Okay. When you do something like that, you're not, you're not really helping yourself. Okay. So the ultimate, again, the ultimate kiss of death here, Martin nowadays, is, is when the belly gets tainted. So when I shake it, okay, I'm looking for any breaks in the fur. And right away I see a big break in the fur right here. I blow on it, and then you can see the bald spot where the taint has hit, happened. The problem with taint is that you don't know how big it's going to go. So that's a damaged Martin. So... You know, this, let's size it here real quick. So a large Martin, today's market, you know, around the $45 range, but because it's got the taint in it, it's a $10 Martin. So be careful, guys. 
The trick to, to staying away from Tane is pelt those Martin as fast as you can. As soon as you catch them, you get them to your skinning room. Don't let them hang around for a day or two before you skin them. Skin them right away. If you don't have time to put them up, that's fine. But get them uh, off the carcass and get them put into a, a into the freezer and freeze freeze the belt. Okay, it'll buy you some time. You don't have time when it's on the carcass. The weather is so extreme. I mean, this year, I don't think anybody's really witnessed a winter like we just had. So take the time. You're, you're going through the whole effort of catching something. Try to present it the best possible way. Get it pelted as fast as you can. If you can't get it on the stretcher right away, then put it in the put it in a, in a milk bag and put it in the freezer. Okay. When we're grading Martin for the weight, we're going to run our hands along the edge like this, and we're going to push our thumb and our fingers on the other side to feel the resistance we feel in the fur. The weight is what the finish is. So at the start of the season, they can be what we call flat or light. Then as the season progresses, they'll go to a semi, and then at the, later on in the season, they'll get to a heavy. So when you start it makes a difference. Whether it's a semi or heavy can depend, depend on the health and the age of the animal. Not, not everything is equal in nature. They don't get fed every day. If there's a lot of... Uh, Bulls, which is a type of mice that they feed on heavily. There's lots of them. They have a lot of resources to finish out a good coat. If they don't, if there's a shortage of mice because they fluctuate, they could, they're hunting rabbits, they're hares, they're hunting all kinds of other things to try to make it up. They might not have the resources to be, a, to everyone to make a heavy. But definitely, starting early will give you a flatter skin or an early skin. Going later, Cup by, and a couple of weeks makes a huge difference. Not, I'm not talking uh, waiting a month, a couple of weeks makes a big difference. So when we're, when we're feeling it, we're gonna run our hand against the fur from the, from the tail, base of the tail up towards the head. And we're gonna, usually we pop it. And the reason we pop it is to look to see if there's any defect in it. So when you pop it, all the hair stands up. So you can see on this one, there's a clip right there. Okay, so when you pop it, you see it right away. The other thing we're going to look for is a break in the, in the, in the, on the belly or the flanks, and that's when we look for, for a taint. Okay, again, we'll shake it to pop it. We're looking to feel the amount of resistance we have when we run our fingers through it. Okay, so a heavy, this is a heavy. You can, you can almost see it if you look closely in the, in, the, uh, in the video here. You know, this is an earlier skin, younger animal. This is a little bit later, by probably a week or two, and then this is right in the right in the heavy part of the season. So, even with a heavy, a heavy can get past its best before date. The window for prime fur is not very big. I'm talking like weeks, not months. So there's going to be a couple of weeks that it's at its peak. So it's either going to be coming on or going off. When they start to go off, they start to lose their color. They get a kind of a washed look to them, or like a, a yellowish tone or an off, sometimes yellow, but you know, there'll be an off look to it. It's not gonna be, the clarity of the color is not gonna be as sharp, okay? And then the guard hairs start to break off a little bit. So this one is a nice one, it's got, it's got a full finish, okay? But in the late skin, the color is gonna start to fade and the guard hairs are gonna start to break out. So you see how I run my hand here? You can see it's, it's got nice uh, guard hairs with it. Okay, so a late pelt is the guard, the under fur is growing up so much that it's kind of almost peeking out through the, through the guard hairs and the guard hairs start to break off. So there's kind of your three rough grading. These are your three weights that you're looking at. So an early or, or a flat, a light, a semi pelt and a heavy pelt. Okay. These two can happen at any time of the season. This one basically always happens at the start of the season. Just because a trapping season is open doesn't mean the fur is at its peak. Sometimes trapping season is open for more for political reasons. Not so much with uh, land fur, except I would say maybe in the fox because we have a longer fox season than, than, than what we need. September is way too early. But in Martin, you're probably your peak time when I, when I go full out for Martin, I start around the 10th of November and I want to be done pretty well by Christmas. Definitely by the 10th of January, I'm finished. I don't, I don't really try to trap them after that unless 
conditions are such that I can't get out and I might go for a little later, but I understand right away that my Martin aren't going to be as good if I could have took them in December at the peak. Again, that window of primeness is not large. It's either coming on to prime, short window that it's prime, and then it's off prime. So that's what you're always up against. And like I said, just because a season is open doesn't mean that the fur is at its best. So delaying, a lot of our seasons open a bit too early. Um, so, you know, for example, the Martin season in the Northwest Territories, which is a lot further north than us, opens November 1st. Here in October, it opens October the 25th. I would highly recommend in Ontario, November 10th, and then go, go full out until Christmas, and then be done for sure to try to be done by the 10th of January. Unless circumstances means you can't get into some areas, just the way some of our lines are set up. But just expect that you're going to have some skins that aren't going to be, they're going to be nice and heavy, but they might be get going off. So there you are in a nutshell. A flat, a semi, and a heavy. So light, semi, heavy. That's what you're looking for. Okay, I just want to show a quick tip about uh, storing your Martin. So once your Martin are dry, you put them on the board, you've turned them, you've taken the board out, you let them hang for a couple days, they're completely dry. I recommend getting a fur hanger, okay? And, uh, it's really easy, you just string them by the, by the eye. Okay, it doesn't take long. And uh, you can hang them up. You're looking for a cool, dry place without any bugs, bugs, any mice around. Not near a wood stove or a furnace. Just somewhere where it's cool and dry. I can put about 20 uh, Martin on one of these hangers. Then you can find them at different trap supply places. Okay. And uh, there you go. So you hang it up. You can hang it by uh, by a hook. And that way, there they stay nice and straight, and they're not all out of out of uh, form. And then just before you ship them, I usually use a smaller size fur bag, and that's what I put them in. I keep them separate from any greasy animals like the beaver grease or whatever the the beaver uh, fat side. So hanging them up like this, it's going to keep them nice and dry. Keeps them away from mice, and it's a good way to protect them. Now, if you're going to hold a Martin over the summer, it's got to go in the freezer. Don't just leave it hanging like this because the fur bugs will get in and it'll, it'll destroy the pelt. So if you're going to uh, hang it somewhere, or, or if you're going to hold it for a season, that I recommend getting it into a fur bag and into the freezer and leave it there till next season until you're ready to, to sell it. But that's the way I like to store my Martin when I'm done. Like I said, I can get 20 on a, on a hanger like that, and uh, they're they're out of the way. <laughs> the dog's not going to get into them. Mice aren't going to chew on them. They're, they're ready to go when I'm ready to sell them. Okay? I just wanted to go over quickly again the uh, characteristics that you're looking for in a good handled mark. Okay? You want to make sure there's no claws, the front legs are tucked inside, the tail is split and pinned open, the, tail, the feet, the back feet aren't pulled for length, they're just pulled nice, just taunt and then you pin them and they're opposite of the tail. There's no advantage of putting them on the back with the tail, it doesn't give you anything. Cut the inside lip off and pin the ears flat to the head. So you're looking, you know, you're looking for that uniform put up, okay? When you start throwing the model my Martin on the table, they're very, very uniform. The only thing that's really different in them is the size. But remember, front legs inside, bottom lip cut off. There's one I forgot to pin the ears. guys enjoy this one uh, 
by no means is this fine grading. This is just to give you a rough idea to what you're looking for. Just quickly to recap, if you're north of 50, the 50th parallel, then just use a single big size Martin board. It's, my, my Martin board is a copy of a, of a ranch mail board. And if you're south of 50, I recommend using the two. Put the measurements on your boards, 16, 18, 21, 23. Put a center line so you get your tail nice and straight all the time. A fur comb is your friend, you know. Just a dog slicker brush, but there's more money lost in the handling of fur than there is in, in, in any, uh, any other step. Pelt them as quick as you can so you don't end up with belly taints on them. And uh, just make yourself up a measuring board. It's just a, it's a really nice way to, to size your Martin really quick. You know, you grab it by the base of the tail, you put it on the board, and it's gotta be over the line to be that size. Okay? So that's a quick recap. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Um, you can check out some of my other videos on my YouTube channel. And uh, thanks for viewing. Take care.